Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So last time we were looking at a set X which is non-empty and H hereditary sigma ring on X and <coughs> mu star an outer measure on H. Then we define S star S bar equals mu star measurable sets. So E belongs to S bar. So this means mu star of A equals mu star of A intersection E comp E plus mu star of A intersection E complement for all A in H. And then we saw this is equivalent to saying greater than or equal to the same thing. because the other inequality is obvious by subadditivity. And then we prove that S bar is a sigma ring. First we proved it is a ring, then we proved it is a sigma ring. And mu star equal to mu bar equals mu star restricted to S bar is a measure. Okay, so now given X a non-empty set and R a ring and mu a measure on R, then we can, we had a natural uh, extension, so we had a natural mu star which is the outer measure generated by mu on H of R, which is the smallest shady tree ring containing R. So, how was this mu star of E defined? Mu star of E, if you recall, this is equal to inf of set of all sigma mu of EI, I equals 1 to infinity such that E is contained in union I equals 1 to infinity EI, EI in R. Because every member of the hereditary sigma ring generated by R can be covered by countable elements uh, in the ring and so you take all such countable covers and then take the corresponding series and then take the infimum. This gives you the natural outer measure generated by R. So now this, if you now define S bar equals mu star measurable sets, in uh, H of R, then mu star is uh, a measure on S bar. So we have now got uh, a, a, a different set, a sigma ring on which you have a measure coming from the original measure. Now the question is, is this an extension of the original measure or not? So that is the question which we want to answer and therefore we have the following proposition. So R a ring of subsets of x non-empty and mu measure on r mu star induced outer measure on h of r then if s bar is the collection 
of mu star measurable sets we have S of R, the sigma ring generated by R is itself contained in S bar. Since R is contained in S bar, so and okay, in particular, mu bar equal to mu star restricted to S bar is an extension. of mu to the sigma ring generated by R as well as to S bar and is complete with respect to S bar. Okay, So, mu bar is a complete measure and it is an extension. So, given any ring and a measure, you can extend it by this method of outer measure to uh, as a to a complete measure and this complete measure also gives you an extension to the sigma ring generated by this. So, we have proved almost all of these parts except so proof only need to show S of R is contained in S bar all the things will follow. So, enough to show R is contained in S bar because if R is contained in S bar, S bar is a sigma ring. So, it should contain the smallest sigma ring containing R and therefore, it should contain S of R also. So, this is the, uh, so, so it is enough to show that R is contained in S bar. Okay. So, let us take, so let E belong to R and let A belong to H of R. So, what should to show? In fact, that mu star of A, let us say, is greater than or equal to mu star of A intersection E plus mu star of A intersection E complement. That will show that E is mu star measurable and therefore, it belongs to S bar. So, R will be in S bar and therefore, S of R will also be in S bar. Now, obvious if mu star A is plus infinity. Because this side is infinity, you do not care what is on this side. So, assume without loss of generality that mu star A is finite. So, what is the definition of mu star A? We have already defined it here. So, this is the definition of mu star A. If that is finite, that means there exists E i in R. <coughs> such that A is contained in union I equals 1 to infinity E i and sigma mu of E i, I equals 1 to infinity is less than mu star A plus epsilon. So, so, so given epsilon positive, there exists E i. So, you can find a cover such that this, this happens. Now, we have that mu star equal to mu because it extends mu we know that uh, which is a measure on R. And therefore, you have sigma i equals 1 to infinity mu of E i equals sigma i equals 1 to infinity. I can write each of these terms. So, I can write mu of E intersection uh, E i plus mu of e, sorry uh, okay E complement intersection E i because it is a measure. Each of these sets E i is nothing but the union of e disjoint union of E i intersection E and E i intersection E complement. So, being a measure this has to add up now. Now, uh, we have also sub additivity of the now what about E intersection E i?
this contains A intersection E and similarly union I equals 1 to infinity E complement intersection E I contains uh, A intersection E complement because union I E I contains A and therefore by subadditivity of the measure so by subadditivity What do you have? You have that sigma mu of E i is greater than or equal to uh, mu of mu star of A intersection uh, E plus mu star of A intersection E complement. And therefore, this implies since mu star of A, we have this relation here. So, mu star of A plus epsilon is strictly bigger than mu star of A intersection E plus mu star of A intersection E complement. So, you have that epsilon arbitrary implies that mu star of A is therefore greater than or equal to mu star of A intersection E plus mu star of a intersection E complement and this implies that E belongs to S bar that is R is contained in S bar which implies that S of R is also contained in S bar and the theorem is completely proved. Okay. So, this construction extension uh, construction of a complete extension of a measure. So, this method is due to Karathiodari. So, method of Kara so, this is called the Karathiodari extension of a measure. So, you get a complete measure on all the measurable sets and you it also uh, extends it to the sigma ring containing the measure. So, if you construct a measure on a ring, you can always extend it to the sigma ring and also you can extend it to a complete measure on a slightly bigger sigma ring. Okay. So, So, remark, suppose mu is sigma finite on R, then we already saw that mu star is sigma finite on H of R and any element can has in H of R has a countable cover from R with each set of finite measure. This we saw this. We already saw this and therefore this implies that mu bar is sigma finite on S bar and S of R. Okay, so this just a uh, simple observation which we have there. So, next let us we have the following proposition and we will see in a moment why it is important. Okay, so mu measure on R a ring on X non empty. Mu bar its extension to S bar and S R by the above method. Okay. So, let E belong to H of R. Then we can compute the outer measure of E equals inf of mu bar of F F in S bar and F containing E and this is also equal to inf of mu bar of F, F belong to S of R, F containing E. So, now the mu star measurable, say, mu star outer measure has a slightly easier uh, 
uh, formula. When you can you can do it from S bar, S R, or R, whichever value you like. So proof. We'll write down a series of inequalities, and the proof will come from that. So mu star of e. What is the definition? This is equal to inf sigma i equals one to infinity mu of e i e contained in union e i i equals one to infinity e i in r. And because of the definition, this is equal to the same i equals one to infinity mu bar of e i. Because mu is the same as mu bar, so there is no difference. Now I am going to take, if I take a slightly e i from a bigger set, then I will have more countable covers and therefore the infimum will go down. So this is greater or equal to infimum sigma i equals 1 to infinity mu bar e i e contained in union i equals 1 to infinity e i and e i now taken in s of r. Now by subadditivity this is greater or equal to infimum mu bar of a union i equals 1 to infinity e i e contained in union i equals 1 to infinity e i e i in s of r. This is just a subadditivity property uh, sigma mu bar of e i is greater than mu bar of union e i is something we know because that is a measure which is therefore subadditive. Okay. Now, so therefore that is greater equal to, in fact it is equal to here infimum of mu bar of f e contained in f f in s of r. In fact you can show that this is in fact equal okay. because in, I am replacing countable cover by all possible covers from sets. So union E i is in S r. So, it is a typical set in S r okay. So, because it is a sigma ring. Now, this again I am going to take infimum over a larger set. So, the infimum goes down E contained in F and then F is in S bar now. But on S bar what is this? This is equal to infimum mu star of f e contained in f, f is in S bar because mu equals mu, mu bar equals mu star. But then f is greater than equal to e, mu star is outer measure therefore it is monoton and therefore this is greater than equal to mu star of e. Okay. So, you started with mu star of e, you have again mu star of e, you chain of inequalities. So, everything is an equality now and therefore, in particular mu star of e is equal to this one as well as this one. Okay. So, that proves the theorem. Now, why did we, what is the use of this result? Okay. So, we now have a ring r and we had a measured mu here. Then we constructed the hereditary out uh, sigma ring hr with mu star. Then we had mu star measurable sets and here we have mu bar which is equal to mu star. Then we showed that in fact this contains S of R and so again here you have mu bar which is a measure. So, this is how the Karothi order the scheme works. Okay. So, you from R you go to H of R, you go to S bar, then you come to S of R. Okay. So, now, now I can try to play this game again. So, I can try to, I have a sigma ring which is a ring and a measure on it and I can try to find the hereditary sigma ring which contains this, but that will be just H of R because H of R already contains it and uh, it is the smallest which contains R. So, it, it will also be the smallest which contains S of R. It cannot be anything smaller than that. So, H of S of R is the same as S of R, H of R.
okay now the by proposition above if you go look at all the chain of inequalities here you get that mu bar star of e is the same as mu star of e so there are the, the thing is if you go see construct the definition you have mu bar is a measure if you construct the corresponding outer measure that is precisely the same as uh, so we have it here which is this and therefore you have nothing different so it just says that it's the same so in place s bar for mu bar is the same as s bar for mu and therefore the measure is still the same so this me construction method is finished once and for all you cannot try to get something more out of this uh, anymore because of the previous proposition it completes the entire process you can't play this game again and again because if you try to do it you will end up with the same results so this tells you that uh, that is the advantage so now we will use this method to construct the Lebesgue measure so we have this semi closed open intervals semi open intervals for which we know you have a uh, notion of a length now we have the ring containing all such intervals so we have to show that that generates a measure on that ring that is the only job once you have that measure now we apply the Carothéoide deconstruction and immediately you go to the sigma ring go to the mu star measurable sets you get a complete measure which will be the Lebesgue measure so this is the idea and so now everything all the work has been done so in the, once we construct the measure which is nothing but the generalization of length but to finite unions of intervals that's all we have to do once we do that then automatically the Carothéoide method will tell you how to do the Lebesgue measure and we will see also that you can do simultaneously the same thing you don't have to work again and again in any space dimension r1 r2 r3 rn and so on so it's really a very powerful method and which will give you the Lebesgue measure uh, immediately so that will be the next thing we do of course before that we'll do some exercises based on what we have learned up to now and after that we'll construct the Lebesgue measure